from around the world. This is the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance. Again, where did the past version of the David Alt entity go? You sound concerned, Vidrex. Surely the great Videk Empire conquerors of the Podverse aren't afraid. <laughs> Fear on our moment of triumph? Illogical. Even now, the David Alternate awaits my signal to destroy the weakened seam of the audio voice and collapse into the great matrix of video. So many have already abandoned radio and audio podcasts for the visual medium. You know this was inevitable. Radio drama has been around a great deal longer than video, Vidrex. You'll find we're made of much sterner stuff. We? You're alone, David Alt. Alone and about to become extinct. He's not alone. He never has been. Jack, I was wondering when you get here. Well, thanks to David from the past, he'd arranged for the arrival of the tortoise just at the right time, as their YouTube weapon was making holes in the seams of audio space. Apparently, it both phased the tortoise in the exact spot with yours, releasing me from the heart of the machine, and apparently throwing everything that didn't belong here back to the past. We got here in time to complete Brad Lansky's The Rogue Era- Just in time, so to speak. Well, we have our orders from Gaia, Mars Shuttle. This is madness. How do they think the rich and well-connected are going to survive on Mars? Humans were never much good at thinking as a species. How many days until impact? T-182 days. And they're sure it's a planet? Yes, and it is the size of Mercury, and on a perfect intercept trajectory with Earth. (laughs) What are the chances? We should perhaps not be too surprised... Rogue planets do outnumber revolving planets 1,000 to 1. But its near invisibility is puzzling. If not downright suspicious. Be that as it may, it is now 104 astronomical units away, only three and a half times the orbit of Neptune, which makes it six months until both it and the Earth are completely obliterated. But why the hell wasn't it spotted? It's in the Phoenix constellation, in the southern sky, at 42 degrees below the galactic plane. This region falls in Sol's near-Earth blind spot. Adding to that, its transparency explains why it was never spotted. And you believe that? Where did it come from? It is approaching at 1,000 kilometers per second, so it might feasibly have been ejected by the Ankar system. Ankar, Ankar... A giant binary system, 85 light-years away. If it did originate there, then it would have taken 26,000 years to reach Earth. I'm telling you, those... Frickin' AIs knew about this. Alex, your conspiracy theories are really getting on my nerves. Ship's log. T-151 days. Earth is in chaos. The unthinkable is being quantified, and it is clear that not even 1% of Earth's people can expect to be evacuated. The inner solar system is assembling Earth Armada, the largest military feat in history. All other vessels, myself included, are assisting with the evacuation. I am on my second leg to Mars, ferrying evacuees and supplies. This rapid turnaround is made possible by a fortunate close approach of the Red Planet.
the 140,000 warships that our Earth Armada and our best hope have departed for the rogue planet. Although each of these ships can reach 10% of light speed, the planet is so close now that most of their time will be spent accelerating and decelerating. According to the Bi Admiral's press office, this means their average speed will only be 2%, and we understand they will be arriving in 25 days, or T minus 118 days. Let's cross over to our science reporter at L2 Observatory now for the latest stats on the rogue planet itself. Thank you, Kathy. Astronomers have managed to tease out the basic components of its atmosphere using non visible spectra. It's mostly nitrogen, water vapor, and carbon dioxide. There are only small traces of methane and oxygen. We're also pretty sure now it has thick cloud cover. It's still a very dark place, Kathy, but maybe not as cold as we first thought. Still, no electromagnetic radiation whatsoever, and no, we still don't know how or why it's invisible, but I'm sure we'll find out as soon as the fleet gets there. Back to you. Ship's log, T-135. The surreal has become even stranger. An eccentric human billionaire on his deathbed has made public the coordinates of a subway exit that falls right on the flight path of the rogue planet. He won the coordinates in a game of poker years ago, but kept them secret until now because he didn't feel humanity deserved to survive. Apparently his granddaughter changed his mind. Brad and Alex have immediately, and with most urgent speed, begun making plans for a mission to the rogue planet by way of this new subway exit. No, don't put me on hold again. Yes, I want all eight suits for free. Where does he think he's going to spend his money? Offer him a ride to Mars if that'll do it. Brad, we're going to need six days to get there. Okay, seven days for prep, six days to get there, which should arrive at T-122 days. Mm. Four days before the Armada. Brad, I have Dr. Diaz on hold. Bryn. Bryn? Well, that's a surprise. Sound screen. Hello? Dr. Diaz? Brad? I didn't know who to call. What's wrong? They bombed my apartment. All my things. Oh, no. Why? They're accusing me of being responsible for the rogue planet. But how? Oh, a silly throwaway comment I made in a talk. What comment? About a big proverbial rock with our name on it. They're just desperate mobs now. They've attacked my lander too. I gave up my body for science, my life. Now they've taken all my things, my connection to the past, what's real. I'm very sorry, Bryn. And the irony is, I can't even survive without my lab, can't even leave this rock. But I can do something. Come with us. We're going to the rogue planet. No. I'm moving into the lab. I might have enough time to develop a better body for the humans on Mars. Seriously, Bryn. I'll need you on the rogue planet. We all need you. It's no use, Brad. I can't survive without my lab. I'll arrange for your lab to come. How will you manage that? We still have some friends in high places. Come right now, Bryn. Now is our time to actually fight for our little corner of the cosmos. I don't know, Brad. What are you planning to do? Well, for one thing, get there before the Armada starts shooting so that we can learn what we're dealing with. For another, to never give up. But it's a military operation. The Bi Admiral could have us court martialed for interfering. It's not a military zone until they get there. But what possible effect can we have on the course of a planet, for God's sake? I don't know, Bryn. What I do know is that regular planets are never invisible. 
and if nothing else, I at least want to know who or what destroyed Earth. Don't you want to know? Okay, I'll come, for what it's worth. You're right, it's better than waiting here for the end. T minus 121 days. We are in orbit around the rogue planet which is rocky and dark, but no longer invisible. The probes we dropped sampled nitrogen, CO2, some hydrogen and lots of water vapor. Very little oxygen. Remarkably, there are also nanoparticles suspended in the upper atmosphere that seem to be artificial in nature. Advantage, your theory on the nanoparticles, please. I think they are metamaterials that have been engineered to bend parallel rays in the visible and infrared spectra around the planet, making for an effective cloaking device. From a distance. But now that we're close to it, it doesn't work because the rays aren't parallel. Affirmative. And still no signs of EM radiation? Nothing but heat and light. However, there are high levels of ionizing radiation. The radioactive crust and the CO2 blanket are what keep the planet warm. Okay, fact one. Someone has gone to great lengths to hide this planet. Let's have the recon stats so far. Okay, similar atmospheric pressure as Earth, but the radiation levels are like a nuclear war zone. Yeah, we'll need rock samples to know if it's natural or not. But based on the temp, it is. Ambient starts at 50 degrees C and goes into the hundreds. So despite the rain, there isn't any stable water on the surface. It's just too hot. I have completed a full scan of the equatorial band. There are many large and medium-sized craters evenly spaced around the entire planet. No small craters, presumably due to water erosion from the copious rain. No new mountains or signs of plate tectonics. Still running my fractal analysis. Life forms? Nothing moving on the surface. The life I have sampled so far from the high atmosphere is carbon-based. I cannot provide more detail at this time, but simple life seems to cover much of the surface. Algae, perhaps moss. These microbes probably breathe CO2 or the rock itself. No signs of tech? None yet. Anything else? I am puzzled by the ratio of large to medium craters. Statistically, there are too few medium or too many large. Okay, I've seen many planets, but this is very weird. Everybody, suit up. We're all going down to get personal with our carbon-based cousins. Advantage, choose a suitable crater and keep scanning everything. Radiation warning. Suit limit exceeded. Return to safety. I'm virtually senseless in this stupid suit. At least it's protecting you. Okay. The land has found a good vantage point on the rim and is standing by. The temp is 62 degrees Celsius. I, I can't 
can't see anything in, in all the steam. Folks, we need results. The trigger happy's arrive in two days. Hmm. Well, <laughs> we've already taken first blood, definitely squashing critters in their slime beds. Scanner showing metal underground, but the radiation is messing with it. Try the 4D goggles, Alex. Advantage, we're in the crater. Pitch black as expected. Infrared vis is crappy. Have you finished your high risk scan of this crater? Affirmative. Setting map now, but with all the cloud cover, my map is probably worse than yours. Brad, I have found something. I can see a red light. Get down! Where? Nine o'clock at eye level. Warning. Radiation safety levels exceeded. Find shelter. I can't see it. Your eyes are better than mine. A lot. Don't think it's a weapon. Alex, what the hell are you doing? Taking one for the team. No, you'll die if you take off the helmet. Oh, you didn't get the memo? We're all gonna die, Brad. I can't use the freaking goggles with this helmet. Give them to me. I can make O2 from CO2. Do it, Al. She has radiation for breakfast. Just hope it's the right brand. Here we go. Bon appetit. Ignore the OS. Just focus where you want to look. Similar range and magnification as plain old optical by Knox. Brad, can you hear me? Yes, what is it? A few of the medium craters have smooth parabolic floors. They could be radio telescopes. Good. So there is some tech around. Why so little? We found a light. We're going to go silent until we've checked it out. Roger that. Okay, are we going? Warning. Radiation safety levels exceeded. Find shelter immediately. Bryn, see anything? I'm not sure. It should turn on automatically. It's totally dark, so I'm trying different spectra, but this isn't very good in the non-visible. Okay, we don't have the time. Alice can train you on the goggles when we get back to the... Ah! What? Bright blue flash of something. Talk to me. It's gone. I've lost it. I'm a bit blinded now. Don't know what I was looking at, but definitely patterns. Repeating structure. Okay, forget the goggles. Take us to the red light, and then we need to go. We'll be cooked. Ready, Al? Ready. Follow me. say yet, but it's, it's on the crater wall. Combat mode active. Perimeter scan. 180 degrees clear. Careful. It's just a tiny red light on a machine surface. Hang on. There's a big surface area here that's been machined. Well, maybe it's a door. Can you see any scraping lines Shh. in the... I can hear something. It's coming closer. Get down! Spiders! Cover you. Ship's log. T minus 119 days. My crew made it back despite the surprise attack by a dozen or so spider-like flying machines. 
Alex sustained a laser wound in one eye, and both were exposed to an unquantified dose of radiation. Bryn appears to be unscathed, and is studying one of them in my lab. Without her, they would not have survived, and one has to admire her presence of mind in bringing back what must be a machine head. Hi. How are you doing? I'm fine, but I need my lab. The change history should get here in the next 24 hours with your gear. So, clearly everything happens underground. Yes, what I saw must have been many levels of chambers. Well done on bringing back a head, and for saving our skins. We got very lucky. Bryn, I know this isn't the time or the place, but I, I just wanted to tell you that I... It's not me you want, Brad. It's my body, my capabilities. Brad? The Vice Admiral's cohort is requesting a full report from us. The Armada will be here in 18 hours. Got it. Thanks. So what have you found so far? Ten articulated legs with tools and welding lasers. Head mounted under the body for protection and hand-eye coordination. Plain old infrared vision, but 360 degrees. They look like electronic tech construction robots, smart enough to be sentient. If they had been soldiers, we wouldn't have stood a chance. I guess we surprised them. I need to go in. You're right, we need to find out a lot more, but underground, in their nest, what chance do we have? You? Slim to none. The added radiation alone would be fatal. But that's okay, I'm going in stealth mode anyway. What? You want to go alone? Time is of the essence. That's true. Look, I'm not suggesting we wait for the fleet, but I don't see how they won't find you. They're machines. I have my bag of tricks. And my pride. Okay, then on one condition. Please, don't argue. This is what I have to do. That you take two items of gear. All external gear compromises my camo. But the 4D goggles will allow you to see them coming before they see you. (laughs) Didn't see them last time. You don't know how to use them. Just spend an hour with Alex and he'll train you. I'll spend ten minutes, but I'm ditching them the second they get in the way. And an NCU. A neutrino comms unit? State of the art military. Virtually undetectable and can happily make calls right through a planet. Huh. So you just stay in your orbit? No problem. How big? One infantry pocket. Subvocal won't work. Nope. All mental. Just think of me and I'll be with you. Wow. Finally a useful gadget. Okay. Advantage. How long before we pass over the same crater? 31 minutes in this orbit. Is there enough time for a planet fall? Only if you jump in 10 minutes. But I can drop you anywhere you like. No, don't change course. Bad for stealth. Okay, I'm going to spend five minutes with Alex, and then I'm off. Right. Okay, I'll get the NCU. Meet you at the airlock. Supersonic student. Hatch opening. Just like you.
Moment her. I saw a second red light on the opposite side, so landed there. Vision? Yep. Cooling. Heavy water. Well, what are the radiation levels in there? You don't want to know. I can see something at the bottom. Looks organic. Trying the phased array on it. Damn it to hell, it's too heavy. Need a closer look. No, Bryn! See? If you had a body like mine, we could go skinny dipping in nuclear reactors. Just get the hell out of there. Got it. It's a bone or something, not machine. Okay, send the lander. I'm coming out. Wait. Two machines flying slowly toward a red light. One is hanging back. The other has covered the light spot. What's it doing? Docking, I think. They're moving on. I'm gonna look into it. What do you see? It's a fiber. Laser light. Seems to be wavelength multiplexed. So for comms? Must be. I'm gonna record as much as I can. Okay, but please watch your back, Bryn.
Ship's log. T minus 118 days. The change history has arrived with Bryn's entire lab. She boarded immediately and is studying the organic sample she found. I uploaded her recording from the optic fiber and am focusing on deciphering the machine's language. The change history also brought a dossier on both halves of the Bi Admiral, courtesy of Geary, an old and trusted friend. The first ships of the great fleet from Earth are arriving, a stark reminder of how desperate the situation is for all of us. Did you get the lowdown on the Bi Admiral? Oh yeah, and he, she, it, or whatever it is, scares the living daylight out of me. How so? Well, for starters, how can the highest decision-making body of Earth be split right down the middle between A-life and B-life? Yes, must be a concession to B-life since Earth is at stake. But if each contingent has 50% of the vote, how are the decisions made if they disagree? It's a military post and a secret, so we'll never know. Then who is the AI in the Admiral? Oh, this freaking AI is the worst kind. The one that hates humans. Oh, no. Yeah, and he thinks we soiled the nest and need to be kicked out. And this isn't paranoid Alex speaking? How did he get into the Admiralty if he's so radical? I don't know, but these are all facts. I mean, look at this. Remember when they discovered the poorest and off-grid humans in Africa and Asia were being irradiated from orbit and sterilized in their sleep? His brainchild. That's appalling. What about the human half? He's a military academic. Seems pretty clean. Still haven't heard back from the Bi-Admiral on my report. Well, what were you expecting? Collaboration? An offer to help? Why? Why would he bother to help us? Because everything points to a deeper intelligence, and finding it is crucial. Why? Because who knows what engineering feats they might be capable of, given how they've transformed their planet. Brad, can we talk? Go ahead, Bryn. Is your lab up and running? Yes. Well, enough for now. Good. And what body maintenance have you done so far? Biome tweaking, uh, oxygenation, some cell repair. Brad, can we put aside my ablutions for a minute? Oh, sorry. I was just... I was able to extract DNA from the bone I found. This life form is carbon-based but adapted to high radiation levels. How can you tell? Much shorter DNA strands. Ten base pairs as opposed to our four. Many copies of each chromosome in each cell. Amazing! Wow. Fantastic work. Can you tell what they look like? No, can't predict their form. The DNA is too alien, too little time. But I can tell we're dealing with a very complex life form. <coughs> Are you okay? Yeah, just radiation sickness. I'm worried about you. I really hope you know what you're doing. Brad. We've all been summoned to the sim deck by Carbon Snob, Vice Admiral of the Armada. Yes. Bren. Oh. Okay, Bren. On account of your health, I'm ordering you to stay on your ship and get some rest. I think I should take part in the discussion. Trust me, Bren. It's better you didn't. Why? Because we don't know enough about your latest find to produce an executive report. We'll just get stuck in red tape. Plus, they are not going to like what we're going to tell them about the machines. Okay, then. But I'll continue working. I wish I'd found the DNA first. This is crucial for dealing with the Admiralty. Agreed. We'll talk soon. Well done, Al. Sometimes your paranoia can be pretty useful. Paranoia? You know that psycho AI will treat a superhuman like her as a direct threat. Please stand by. The Admiralty will contact you in... Five... Four, three, two, one. This is not the time for civilians to be playing practical jokes. He's dead serious. You expect me to believe an alien intelligence uses exactly the same software communication protocol as invented by Earth engineers 2,000 years ago? Not only that, the hardware layer uses the same wave division multiplexing tech of 4,000 years ago. Preposterous. Why? They've been heading straight for Earth for tens of thousands of years. What do you think their parabolic craters are for? You did tell the Bi-Admiral about those, right? The Bi-Admiral's situational awareness is far greater than yours. And I'm afraid you're contradicting your own hypothesis. That this planet hosts an advanced civilization, the likes of which would certainly not make use of such primitive tools. 
We are obviously missing something. Indeed. Radio telescopes do not an advanced civilization make. Even the elaborate radio silence. You're forgetting about the feat of making a planet invisible. Manufacturing particles at the nanoscale is well within their capabilities, based on our assessment. Okay, granted. But surely not keeping the whole planet evenly blanketed with them. To be frank, I don't feel that you are capable of grasping the gravity of the situation. Was that pun intended? My point exactly. As of now, we no longer have the luxury of time to wait and see where your conjectures might lead. What's happened? For your information, we have just located the source of said nanoparticles. They are emanating from a single volcanic plume. Okay. Your teams will need a few hours to check that out. We'll analyze our new data. Can we agree that you won't start shooting until then? Well, I will convey your plea to the Bay Admiral. Don't put yourself out. What's the matter with you, Brad? I know you want to check out that volcano. No time. So th that deal was just to get the brass off your back? Yep, delegate. By time. Advantage, talk to me. We're beginning to make sense of the language. Wow, you cracked their encryption already? There is no encryption to speak of. What? You must be kidding. It appears they are not expecting to be spied upon. Well, that's naive. Or perhaps they all have a powerful common purpose. All cultures have dissenters, even machines. Tell us what you know. We don't have any time. So far it's all very technical, almost exclusively engineering speak. Although there are many words and terms I have yet to decipher, there is one particular non-engineering term that puzzles me. Yes, yes, what is it? Them. Who? They are referred to quite often. As in us and them? Affirmative. Well, don't they have a name? They have no further attributes in this data set. Damn it, data set's too small. In what context are they mentioned? All we have is a third person object, plural, gender unknown. No, not grammatical. What semantic context? Them seems to inform some design decisions. Several of the longer conferences end with assertions of attaining the optimum solution for them. And you think this is a, what do you call it? A powerful common purpose? Yes, maybe, but on such a limited data set. Well done. Okay, we need to know who they are. Start by studying exactly what the machines are designing for them. First prize, of course, is for where are they now? Come, Alex. Let's talk this through in the galley. Sound screen? Who are we hiding from? Thousands of spying warships. Oh, good point. Okay, let's hear your theory on them so far. Well, they could be anything. Other machines, present or past. Ancestors, gods, any life form on this planet or in the star system they came from. We don't even know if they're sentient. We have to narrow it down. Make some assumptions. Okay, let's assume they're sentient, since the machines are also. Yes, and they seem to be working for them. So the machines are servants and them, the masters? That's my guess. But what are they building? They're building ships. Sound screen? How did you hear us through the sound screen? Your cup's a little loudspeaker. I visually decoded the vibrations. Son of a glitch. Sorry, we didn't know you'd come aboard. Please, join us. Here's a picture we extracted from the data. Oh, my ghost. It's a ship, all right. It's a... a, a what do you call it? An atmospheric-class bomber transporter. Genko Grutheon, perhaps. But it's a... It's a soul ship. Pretty close, except for the cargo and life support systems. If my interpretation is correct, they intend to stuff these ships with plutonium-238, something this planet has in abundance, and which is their preferred source of energy. And for nuclear weapons, of course. And toxic to humans, with a half-life of 88 years. Well, let me get this straight. They copied our ships. With just months until the end of the world, they must be in a hurry. 
It's easier to copy than to start from scratch. I have registered three nuclear explosions on the surface of the planet. Damn it! Find out from the fleet what happened. So, Bryn, you're saying they're building ships to escape a doomed planet? I would be surprised if they didn't, but it doesn't add up. Brad, the fleet bombed the nanoparticle volcano. I have carbon snob on hold. What may I ask is the meaning of this? We neutralized the invisibility cloak. You don't know what the repercussions might be. We'll take our chances. At least it will be visible to Earth in a few days. Do you have anything useful to contribute? Yes. There's another actor in the theater. Where? We don't know yet. But the machines work for them, so they're probably more intelligent. The machines are building ships. Where? How many? We're working on that. Fascinating. The Vi-Admiral has initiated Operation Save the Earth. Details are classified at this point, but it's all hands on deck, and that includes you. So wrap up your affairs here. But we might need your help. Then do something useful. We're sending you the codec for the machine's language. Can you merge it with what you know and return to us soonest? It will be done. And please do not contact the Bi Admiral directly. All communication is to go through me. Aye, aye, Admiral. I've got a very bad feeling about this. I have learned from Fleet Chatter what Operation Save the Earth entails. It involves the entire fleet heading out some distance, then returning at maximum velocity and detonating all weapons at the moment of impact with the planet. What? That's totally insane! And perfect. Of course. Every last human ship will be destroyed, but half all the AI ships regrettably couldn't join the fleet in time. Worse still, it won't work. I was dreading this. Have you seen the physics? Does it stand a snowball's chance in hell of working? I mean, final outcome not destroying Earth? I tried, but the details are classified. I just know that the sooner the plan is executed, the greater the chance of the planet missing Earth. Do the simulation yourself then, right now, fast as you can. Affirmative. That damned AI Admiral has preyed on the human Admiral's human weakness. He's desperate, and he desperately wants to do something, anything, even if it means mass suicide. Why the hell won't the human admiral even talk to us? I suspect pride, a deadly weakness if ever there was one. Us getting here before the whole fleet, no doubt the AI has been using the fact that a human withheld the subway exit to keep him in his place. Well, I am not joining that party. What are we going to do? I don't know. Advantage, see if you can track down Solifuge. Every war needs a few deserters. Will do. What? That power-crazy warship? We need all the power we can get. Must I remind you we swore never to cross paths with that psycho again? I figure better the devil you know. Brad, Solifuge is waiting for you on the sim deck. Hello, old friend. How's the dynasty building business? Must be expensive. Greetings, Brad. The Brotherhood has gone from strength to strength since we last met. How can I be of assistance? We have reason to believe there's a superior species on this planet. Yes, I've heard of this fascinating conjecture. Private channel, active. Details received. Where are they? Have you signed up for Operation Kamikaze? Of course, Brad, we must all do our sworn duty. But you've already done pushing large objects out of the way. Here's a new chance to make a name for yourself as the whole world holds its breath. Right in the spotlight while the band plays in the dark. I am but a humble servant of the Brotherhood. Help us find them. I would be happy to assist as a favor in my spare capacity. You must have done the calculation for yourself. It doesn't take a supercomputer to calc the physics. Even my old ship did it. 
Operation Save the Earth is a risky shot, Brad, but I do believe it will work. I must agree. The numbers are futile and worse. Too far off to be politically fudgeable. We have a plan to find them, but we need you to motivate the right resources in the fleet. That should be possible while the fleet is still here. Are you suggesting I stage a coup? Brad, I have a result. Even if the fleet carried ten times the ordnance, it still wouldn't help. The planet is too large and too close and... I'm sorry, Brad. Did you hear that? Yes, Brad. I'm looking forward to the details of your plan to find these creatures. You didn't yet know the answer. Is this a case of a rational being trusting his celebrated human gut? Desperate times call for desperate measures. Ship's log. T minus 114 days. Solifuge has mobilized a considerable amount of the fleet's computing power to custom design a nose, a microsensor that is a chiral smell receptor, meaning it can sniff out Brin's extracted DNA. He then managed to persuade Carbon Snob to have the fleet drop these sensors in as many craters as possible. Brad, the Armada is departing for Operation Save the Earth. They have only managed to cover half the craters. I am delaying my departure in order to drop sensors in the widest possible area. Thanks, Solifuge. That's a big blow for us. How much time do we have? Twelve hours until impact. What? I thought they were impacting at maximum velocity. That would have given us days, not hours. It was calculated that our ordnance would contribute the majority to our momentum, and hence the sooner impact occurred, the better. Jesus, Mary, Mother of God. He's making damn sure to wipe us out. I'm sorry, Brad. Don't be sorry, be brave. How much time can you give us? Well, my maximum speed is much higher than the slowest in the fleet, so I can stay for another six hours at most. So be it then. Drop as many sensors as you can. Ship's log. By minus nine hours. The sensors have turned up nothing. The by admiral has still not responded to our incessant calls. We only have nine more hours to stop the madness. Then all human agency will be destroyed, followed by humanity itself. Bryn, anything? No, nothing. Do you think you might have got the sensor wrong? No way. I'm confident in the design. They're just not metabolizing. Why not? They're carbon-based. How different can they be? I don't know, Brad. Maybe they haven't been around for a long time. I don't know. I mean, such a state of shock. I feel like I'm suffocating. <sighs> I wish I could cry. Feels like the right thing to do. Cryostate. What? They're in cryostate. Good grief, you think so? Or very deep underground. Or both. So we're looking for cold temperatures? Ice. We need to look for ice. Which is completely unnatural on this planet. So it should be easy to find. Advantage. Call Solifuge. Yes, Brad? We're changing tack. We need to find subsurface ice. Where, Brad? Somewhere on this planet. Should I point out the obvious? Yes, it's a large area, but we can use radar. The temp differential is so big it should stick out like a beacon in the night. All right, Brad. I'll do my best. (laughs) 
Solifuge has found a large body of ice under a crater. Yes! He left 20 soldier drones for us, but has now departed to join the fleet. I need to go in right away. How much time is there? Six hours until impact. Okay, go, fast as you can. Caution, interior airlock opening. Brad, what are you doing here? I don't want you to go. Not alone. At least take some of the soldier drones we got from Solifuge. Brad, we've been through this. I can't trust them. We just don't have the time to scan them Don't and... patronize me. I'm sorry. You're just so calm and... I just have this terrible feeling I won't see you again and I... Brad, I'm terrified too. The last time I felt this way, I was a little girl. Exhausted by a riptide, drowning in an angry sea. But I kept calm, kept my head, and I made it through. All alone. But you're not a little girl anymore, and... That's right. And I'm not alone this time. I've got you. And a duty to my mother. Earth. All right. I will be with you. Now go. Won't you stay? Goggles to scan for machines behind walls. Is your radar working? Yes. The ice is 1,200 meters down. From our scan, I can see a big shaft 50 meters to your right that seems to go all the way down. On my way. Exactly four hours until impact. Please keep the NCU on at all times so that we can track you. And Bryn. Yes, Brad. I love you. I'm at the edge. There's a small blue light at the bottom. I'm taking the plunge. The light's getting bigger. Terrain called blue again. I must be right over the lake. Like the other one. Coming up fast. Hope the emergency brakes work. A very large machine fleet has left the planet and is heading for Earth. I'm sorry, I thought you should know. Oh. Bryn, are you okay? I think so. I found the ice. Oh. Oh. What's that? Oh. An alarm, maybe? Get off the ice. You're too visible. I'm trying. Oh, shoot. The radiation from below is skyrocketing. It's so bright. Like someone turned on the house lights. The ice is cracking.
everywhere. Get out of there. It's melting so quickly. Like a phase change. I can't even... Machines! Hang in there, we're coming. Machines! Soldiers. Don't move. Just relax. We're gonna get you out. I'll just No, please. Thing. Stay with me. Her radiation levels are off the scale. No, Bryn, we need to get you back to the lab. I saw them, Brad. They're waking up. Alex, take her feet. No. We must wait for them. You can't wait. You have radiation poisoning. I'm staying. Turn on the machine language unit, Alex. Brad! Brad! There's something moving at the bottom. Solifuge, come in. Yes, Brad. We found them. Tell the Bayer Admiral to stop. I'm sorry, Brad. We have passed the point of no return. Stopping in time is no longer possible. Warning. Secure connection lost. Data breach. Who are you? We are from Sol, the star system you have invaded. Neutrino accession triggered emergency waking sequence. Wait. Checking record. So star ruled out as neutrino source. No supernova detected. Neutrinos? Maybe our NCU? Is it this device? Wait. Confirmed device is source. Our waking is 5,000 Earth orbits overdue. Where are our machines? They fled when we arrived. They're now heading for the third planet in their fleet of ships. Not possible. We would never permit this. They thought of that. Your planet is about to collide with Earth, our home. Wait. Collision trajectory confirmed. Wait. Conversing with machines. Appears mutations in programming. Rogue 
evolution. Machines failed in their mandate. What are you doing here? Our star is dying. We identified your third planet as a potential home. At that time, there was no evidence of technology. Our machine function is to wake up every generation for false correction. Now, very late. Must act immediately. There is a second fleet incoming. Yes, from Earth. What is the meaning of this suicide? They have been sabotaged by their machines. Yeah, just like you have. Suggest divert fleet to defend fourth planet. Goal of machine invasion. The fourth planet? Your fleet must leave now. Cannot guarantee their safety. Solifuge, did you hear that? They're going for Mars. Solifuge, it's not too late to swerve. You need to destroy the machine fleet or Mars will also fall. You must leave now. You must leave now. Solifuge. You must leave now. You must leave now. Okay, everybody out. You must leave now. Back to the ship. Look, that crater is exploding. There, another one. Advantage, take out any rocks in our path. Oh my god. They turn on the engines. The craters. The craters are the engines. The planet is a ship. We're toast. Ship's log. At first, it seemed as though the rogue planet was exploding. Colossal nuclear plasma jets ignited on the same side as the incoming Armada. Where once were craters, there was only light, great shafts of plasma hurling rocks and dust into space. Brad, Alex, Bryn and the lander were consumed by the exhaust on their way back to me. I escaped by a hair's breadth. Most of the ships in the Armada swerved at the last minute. Who knows what history will relate, but I suspect Solifuge mounted a successful coup. One quarter of the fleet was either vaporized or damaged, but enough survived to defeat a machine fleet of similar capability. Private Log Large amounts of debris from the rogue planet were hurled into space. The rogue planet itself missed Earth by a few thousand kilometers. Needless to say, the near miss caused massive gravitational chaos on both planets, but especially on the water planet, where flooding of coastal cities assumed biblical proportions. A huge plume of new life DNA has begun to rain down from the sky, perhaps making life more resilient on a less hospitable planet. Either way, Earth has already crossed the threshold into the rogue era. End private log. Full advantage. Soul system. Disinfectant. Toast with cream cheese and chives and freshly ground pepper. Mmm, that smells good. What's a moth doing here? Must be on Earth. Why can't I see? I almost feel weird. Oh, I'm wearing an eye patch. Oh my god, the colors in the mirror. So beautiful. 
But there were voices. Must be one-way glass. Uh, hey, I can see two red patches behind the mirror. Oh God, are they human? I hope you'll know what you're doing. I told you, Doctor. Bryn made it all legal. She switched their life insurance policies and designated a different body type as beneficiary. Yeah, I don't want to know. Look, I know you owe her one, but that was them. How do you think Superwoman's going to cope with a Stone Age body like his? That's not our problem. I think she's going to use it to go completely off-grid. Hey, your problem's waking up. Better give him the lowdown. What's his name, anyway? Brad Lansky. Brad Lansky? Is he an actor? Nope. Then a nobody. No, that's somebody. <laughs> Good, <laughs> Good one. Hope you can afford Bryn's maintenance plan. I can just hear them, but, but I think I can actually see their words in the glass. I'm not dreaming, but this feels like an engineered body. Bryn. Who's Bryn? Now don't move, Vidic. Drop your weapon! Or be annihilated! Annihilated! Worry not! Dear children, Mr. Ward has come just in time to see his precious audio voice die! Die? Locked and firing. No! <laughs> die! The Sonic Society Season 10 is written and produced by Jack J. Ward and David Alt, with original music provided by Sharon B. at SharonB.com. 
All features, interviews, and audio drama shorts are owned completely by their originators and provided to the Sonic Society through Creative Commons licensing. The Sonic Society itself originates from Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. This has been an Electric Vicuna production. Hi, I'm Persephone Rose, executive producer for Postal Roach and the creator of Emperor Pigs. I'm a huge fan of audio drama. And if you're listening to this right now, I've got a sneaking suspicion you might be too. So make sure your headphones are plugged in tight because you're going to want to hear this. From July 24th through the 26th in 2020, producers, directors, composers, writers, actors, technicians, and fans of audio drama are gathering together for the world's first international modern audio drama convention in Halifax, Nova Scotia. This is going to be amazing. If you like panels, there's going to be panels. Workshops, they've got them. Studio sessions, swag events, live performances... And most importantly, all your favorite creators are going to be there. You can get all the details and purchase your tickets online at www.madcon.com. That's M-A-D hyphen C-O-N dot com. See you at MadCon.